You a genius. All right, question number five. We have a hot air balloon launch. And then we drop some ballast and accelerate upwards. And we're going to find the velocity versus time graph for this motion below. This is for the balloon. Now we're assuming that the balloon starts from the ground. And we have a constant 1.5 meters per second. So this really isn't the best scaled drawing because we should be clear that this line here is happening at 1.5 meters per second. And then at precisely five seconds, we drop the sandbag. Now it turns out, um, if we um, remember from last year, the area gives us the displacement. So that's going to be 1.5 times 5, which is going to give us a height of 7.5 meters. All right. Now we want schematic time and position graphs for both the balloon and the sandbag. Um, so I'll do the balloon in blue and the sandbag. I will, since I want to pick something sassier for the sandbag, um, spindrift, sea foam, hmm. Strawberry, there we go. So this will be the sandbag. So for the position versus time, again for the first five seconds, we're gonna go from zero to 7.5, and for the balloon, what we'll see, um, I'll actually draw like this, so like this, and then we'll see that the balloon position um, goes it should curve upwards as a parabola. And what we're going to see for the um, sandbag is that it has a similar slope there, but then it actually starts falling towards the ground, speeding up at 9.8 meters per second. Now the acceleration for both, it's zero. And then for the balloon, let's actually get its acceleration. So um, we are told that at um, 5 seconds, so here we've got 1.5 meters per second. And then at 10 seconds, it looks like, kind of guesstimating here, it's really hard to see. Um, I really do wish I had a clearer graph, but I'm going to have to eyeball this and say that we're at about 11.5 meters per second. So the acceleration is going to be 11.5 minus 1.5 divided by 5 seconds. That's going to give me 10 divided by 5, which is 2 meters per second squared for the balloon. So the balloon acceleration um, at 5 seconds is going to be two meters per second squared. And for the balloon, it's going to be negative 10. Sorry, for the sandbag, it's going to be negative 10 meters per second squared like this. So this will be negative 10, and this will actually be two right here from the slope. Now for part C, we want to calculate the position and velocity of the sandbag one second after it was released. So the position, x is one half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught. So the position, its position is going to be one half. Now its acceleration is negative 10 t squared, but it was moving at an initial speed um, when it was dropped of positive 1.5 t squared, and its initial position was, we actually looked at that, the position it was at, sorry, when it was dropped was 7.5 meters. So after one second, we have x is one, is gonna be um, negative five times one 
plus 1.5 plus 7.5. It's going to work out to be um, 4 meters. Okay. Now we want to know at what time did the sandbag hit the ground. So we have um, it hits the ground when the final position is 0. So we can say 0 equals negative 5t squared plus 1.5t, by the way I had this wrong, it should just be a plain old t, not t squared, um, plus 7.5. Um, so we can actually do a bit of math here. So t is going to be using the quadratic formula, negative 1.5 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 1.5 squared minus 4a, which is 5, c, which is 7.5, all over 2a, which is going to be 2 times a, which is going to be 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10. So our answer for time, time is going to be negative 1.5 minus the square root of here, 1.5 squared min plus 4 times 5 is 20 times 7.5. Right? That's going to end up being 150 all over negative 10. So let's just multiply that out really quickly. The square root of 150 plus 1.5 quantity squared is going to give me 12.33. And we're going to add 1.5 to that. So I'm getting 13.8. So negative 13.84 divided by negative 10. So the time I'm getting is negative 1.384 seconds, which you can check by putting in this formula here. And it, you won't get exactly zero, but it should round pretty close to zero. Now we want to know what velocity did the hit sandbag hit the ground at. So we're going to basically say v is a t plus v naught. V is going to be negative 10. T is going to be, um, I'm sorry, this should be positive 1.384 for, for the time, 1.384. And V initial was positive 1.5. So that's going to give me negative 13.84 plus 1.5. Um, we should definitely have a negative student at the ground, so. Um, That's going to end up giving me about 12.33 meters per second. So that is question number five.